house that big yeah. and your husband don't mind. And yet he's ready to fight and cuss out other men who's looking at his woman. Don't get mad at the men. Get mad at yourself for letting her come out like that. Amen. In God, there's rules, guidelines, discipline. In man-made religion, there are no rules. There are no guidelines. And there is no discipline. And one thing about a man-made church, you won't hear no sin spoken against. It's just a motivational speaker. Motivational speaker. Well, my friend, you, you may have it rough today, but it'll get better tomorrow. Sometimes you just got to go to yourself and say, golly gee. <laughs> <laughs> Motivational garbage. The book of scriptures is here for a reason. The book says all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good work, which means this, the men in the book didn't come together because they ain't had nothing else to do. So a group of old Europeans with long beards wrote the Bible? That's right. No. The book is divinely inspired. That's why the book is against us so. Because God inspired men to write what was against their will. That's right. And if it's against them, it's also against us. Amen. Jesus said, if any man will come after me. Give chapter and verse again. Matthew chapter 16 and at verse 24. If any man pursue me. Let him deny himself. You got to deny yourself. Jesus and joint don't work. No. Jesus and liquor don't go together. No, no. Jesus and a rainbow flag don't go together. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Jesus and sin don't go together. Man, Jesus was so strict and so Jesus wasn't this little timid, no, sir. weak Hollywood image that they put on the screen. No. Every time Hollywood got someone faking like they Jesus, they always make him weak and sissified it. That's right. So one possessed of the devil, come out of here, my son. <laughs> Ain't that the way they do it? Yeah. They always got him sissy. <laughs> Jesus, I read about, was militant. Oh yeah. When they was making the temple into a den of thieves. He turned the tables over. Yeah. Got a weapon and drove them out. That's right. That's right. If Hollywood would have done it, they would have had him. He shouldn't sell in here. <laughs> it's not nice to sell in here. Oh. Come on, shoo, shoo, go now. <laughs> you get what I'm doing. And that's the way preachers preach the Bible. Right. They so scared of losing members because if they lose members, they lose income. And this is why preachers don't speak out against wrong because he's afraid to offend family. He's afraid to offend his own relatives. He's afraid to offend his wife. Who is your wife? If your wife is wrong, preach the word. And if she don't want to get right, she'll go to hell like anybody else. That's right. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Right. The word of God says what? If any man will come after me. Come after Jesus and do what? Let him deny himself. Self-denial is a life of self-surrender. Deny himself, himself and, and take up his cross. Take up his cross. Choose the way of suffering. Amen. And, and follow me. Take up the cross. When Jesus died. And the nails was driven in his hands and feet that took away his momentum. That's right. In other words, if your hands is nailed, you don't have freedom of usage. So if we're taught to take up the cross like Jesus and follow him, then just like they physically nailed his nails, the scriptures take away the freedom of your hands to use him in a manner 
that God is against. His feet was nailed so the scriptures take away the freedom of places you want to go. Amen. That's against God's will. That's right. That's right. You don't have a natural nail in them. I am crucified. But I got the hammer of the gospel yeah. driving God's word down in your soul. That's right. And the apostle Paul says what? I am crucified with Christ. In chapter and verse. In the book of Galatians chapter 2 and at verse 20. I'm crucified with who? With Christ. So if I'm crucified with Christ, Christ come along and take away the freedom of what I normally would do. You know how you normally would? Open up that can of beer. Christ take your freedom away and say, touch not. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know how you would like that joint? Christ take your freedom away and says, handle not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know how you normally uh, will buy pants for your daughter? The Bible says, cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh, and a woman should not wear that which pertain to a man. Our women are out here, skin tight pants showing every groove that God gave them with no sense of shame. When you're in holiness, our daughters don't even wear gym shorts in school. You don't wear gym shorts, you don't wear gym pants. Your body is covered. These old wicked things driving around looking at young girls that's young enough to be their granddaughter slouched down in their chair with a hearing aid bumping their horn at your 15 year old daughter. Amen. Amen. Am I right, I say? Amen. Glory to God. I am crucified with Christ. Crucifixion is needed. In the church. Amen. And where there is crucifixion. Freedom of the will of self. Is nailed down. Amen. You better go back. To what Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter and verse. Back in St. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. You know what? Then said Jesus unto his disciples. Uh, notice. Hmm. He's, he's talking to his followers. That's right. Now get this now. If any, Think of it. Why would he tell his followers this if they was already following him? Jesus was letting them know you just can't follow me physically by walking around where I go. Your mind, soul, body, and spirit must follow him. In other words, God wants to own everything about us. Amen. Because everything about us, he made. And he got the right to tell you what he want, how he want it, when he want it, who to give it to, and who can't have it. That's right. Ain't nothing you can do about it but say, amen, Lord. Amen. Even if it hurts you, amen, Lord. That's right. All right, son. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, uh -huh. If any man will come after me, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. Deny himself. And take up his cross. And take up the cross. And follow, follow me. Follow me. For whosoever will save his life, whoever will save his life, shall lose it. Oh. Whosoever. What do you mean? If they get ready to take your life on behalf of the Lord, you're going to end up losing. You're going to end up being lost. Yeah. But and whosoever will lose his life for my sake, if you give your life up, shall find it. <laughs> you will find it again. For you, haven't, you haven't lost nothing. Right. Uh -huh. For what is a man profit? What do a man profit? If he shall gain the whole world and what? And lose his own soul. That take us right back to the love of money. Yeah. This life is temporary. Amen. Do we understand this? Amen. There's nothing natural or materialistic in this life that you should hold on to so tight that, and be scared to lose it. That's right. Because anything you can think of, you're going to lose. That's right. Your husband one day, your wife one day, your children, you're going to lose it. Your, your, your house, your car, everybody end up losing it. Yeah. That's why the cemeteries are full. And then sometime a liar come over at the funeral and put your drunken son in heaven. Amen. A liar at the funeral put your drunken brother, your 
swearing mama and your cussing sister. It's amazing. They don't care how, what way they die. They give them what they call a Christian burial. Amen. If you die, you didn't obey God. I don't care what lies that Jerry Curl hair preacher say over you. You die without God, brother. The hell God gonna plant you when he come for creation. Right. All right, go back to Timothy, son. Everybody all right? Listen. Back in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and at verse 10. All right. For the love of money. The love of money. Is the root of all evil. So church today has become a religious scam. They call it the blessing plan. The problem with many of us, we don't know what the plan is. I want to tell you what is the blessing plan. The plan is get your money. The blessing is the preacher got your money. That's why if you take note of the television preachers, the whole order of worship is centered around dollars. All their sermon, dollars. All their message, dollars, dollars, dollars. And because everything is centered around the dollar more than God, the dollar has to them more value than God. So now you live to get rich That's right. and you don't live to get right. They that will be rich. Listen. Now in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and at verse 9. They that will be rich. Fall into they temptation. fall into temptation. And a snare. That's why a rich person get into anything. Yeah. Amen. Anything. And they get in it with no conscience. They're not moved. They, they hardly ever apologize or repent because they feel as though they, they're too wealthy. Right. In their mind, who am I? Who am I to apologize? Look at Trump. That's right. Trump don't feel as though he owe nobody an apology. That's true. Just as wicked and ungodly and full of the devil. That's right. That's right. Feel as though that he shouldn't apologize to nobody. He can lie quicker than you can blink. <laughs> Amen. And they have no conscience. It's not a sin to be rich. Because God made Solomon rich. The sin is when riches and materialism have taken over your mind, heart, soul, body, and spirit. And when anything in this life become your God, other than the Lord of heaven and earth, you are a lost fool. That's right. Listen. They that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Look how foolish the rich folk get. Foolish. 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 Yeah, you look at the so-called reality shows. Women and men making money to act like a fool. That's right. Grown women with all these expensive evening gowns on and look like and act like a bunch of hood rats. That's right. Name brand gowns just to act like a bunch of hood rats cussing each other out, pulling each other fake hair out and tearing up their eyelashes. And, and, and all the argument is about some cheap, no good man. That's right. Think of it. That's right. They make all this money just to get on television to embarrass yourself. Amen. You mean to tell me? Listen, understand this, people. Your self-respect. And your self-decency should be more valuable to you than money. Amen. There should not be a producer nowhere on the planet that can make a reality show about you and your family. And you sell your dignity, sell your self-respect, act like a buffoon, act like a barbarian. And just so you can advertise a name brand gown and still act like a hood rat. Amen. Come on, Lord, I said. It is that type of trash television that get the highest ratings because people that got a trash like mine Go love garbage. Elevate your mind. Amen. That's why the book says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Cut out the garbage can Go ahead. and take on, hallelujah, the mind 
of God himself. That's right. When you take on God's mind, that reality trash won't mean nothing to you. Amen. You will be embarrassed by those that's on it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Remember they had this television reality show, Preachers of L.A.? It fulfilled exactly what I've been preaching about. Because them fellas made the Looney Tunes look bad. Every old fake claimed they was a preacher. Any old fake. It's amazing how low men will stoop if it will fatten their wallet. How is it the followers of these pulpit pimps are so blind that they will be a part of the foolishness and have the nerve to credit Jesus. God is not the author of confusion. That's right. God is not a toy. Amen. God is no one to play with. Amen. God is not much. And this is why the sinner have no respect for church. The sinner don't have no respect for church. Religion had became a big racket. That's it. Preachers of L.A. It went from the preachers of, of L.A., preachers of New York, preachers of Georgia, hmm. preachers of this, all a bunch of fellas just playing around. Like God is this game. Which shows you that the fear of God, the respect of God, the love of God is not in them. Right. Because brother, if you fear God, you'll be scared to say this stuff about him. Oh yes. If Hollywood actors fear God, they wouldn't let no one give them a script where they will cuss mm. God. That's right. That's right. There's not enough money in the world. Someone said, well, they acting. In God's eyes, he said, by your words, you are justified. And by your words, you shall be condemned. Amen. You just can't say anything about the Lord and get away with it. God is no man that you play with. That's right. God don't have D-A-M attached to his name. Go ahead. Talk to me. Go ahead. No, go ahead. But because they're rich, they feel as though they can say anything about God. Yeah. Degrade God. Take his name and toss it around at will. Right. With no shame. But brother, just like God brought Nebuchadnezzar down. Okay. And Nebuchadnezzar thought he was somebody. Oh, yeah. Nebuchadnezzar got so arrogant, he said, is this not Babylon that I has built? And why Nebuchadnezzar was exalted himself, the Bible said the voice of the watcher spoke from heaven. And next thing you know, Nebuchadnezzar was driven out of the kingdom and was living like an animal. In other words, brother, nobody can bring you down like God can. That's right. And sometimes that is of a necessity so you can remember where you come from. Right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? But they that will be rich. They. Most men that have the size following we have and the size churches we have will be so high minded and so exalted. But brother, when you fear God, you will you you will know your place. I know my place. That's right. Amen. I'm no fool. That's right. I listen, I still cringe when the thunder too loud. <laughs> Man, listen, when I was coming up and it thundered and lightning, we wasn't allowed to even walk around the house. Mama say, sit down. Sit down, the Lord is talking. That's right. Uh, old folk will put old folk will put sheets over the mirrors and everything. Because you know, like in the South, man, they have them terrible thunderstorms. Oh, yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I used to go to Raleigh, North Carolina every summer and stay down there with my uncle. And uh, I remember when I experienced my first southern thunderstorm. My uncle was at work. Man, my aunt was at work. I went in the house by myself. I was like about seven to eight. And I had an aunt that lived so, I mean, quite a few blocks. You had to drive there. But man, 
<laughs> the winds picked up, skies got dark, that thunder started hitting hard until it like it shook the house and lightning. Hmm. I broke out that house. <laughs> I ran all the way in the rain, thunder and lightning. Every time that thunder and lightning flashed, I was yelling. Ah! I ran all the way to my other aunt's house. She said, Nikki, how you get here? I was drinking wet and said, I ran. <laughs> she said, why you ran? I said, it's thunder and lightning. My aunt laughed for hours. Lord. All it takes is for the Lord to put the right thing behind you that'll make you remember you ain't as tough as you think. No one is richer than God, tougher than God. That's right. So when God bless you with materialistic things, he don't bless you with that stuff for you to forget him. He give you that if that's his will to make you more humble and to render it back to him. Not sin with it. Are you getting what I'm telling you? But they that will be rich. Give chapter and verse again. Still in 1 Timothy chapter 6. At, at they verse that nine. will be rich. Fall. 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 Into temptation. Fall. 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 They got so much money they don't even want to date women no more. They want to date a transvestite. That's true. Huh? That's true. Their friends would be like, look man, that, that, that's a man. He'd be like, I don't care. That's true. He said, I can buy it. I'll try it. Money have given men and women such arrogance until now they feel as though they can just swear, cuss, belittle, reject God. But there are men that were rich before this generation. Notice they're dead. Oil tycoons. What's the name of that fellow who Jackie Kennedy married after the president died? Onassis. Onassis was a tycoon. In fact, I think when he was living, he may have been one of the richest men in the world. Onassis dead. That's right. That's right. All that oil couldn't keep him living. That's right. Look at the wealthy celebrities, all the albums they sold. James Brown, Ray Charles, Moon, Walking Michael. But notice, dead. What am I telling you? Who got the last say over you? Who? Then why don't people act like it? That's right. There used to be a song, and I'm pretty sure you may remember in the 70s, Mr. Big Stuff. <laughs> Who do you think you are? <laughs> You know some of y'all remember because some of y'all used to be dancing to it. <laughs> and if you look at the mentality of the celebrity world, celebrities come to first church. Oh yeah, man. Celebrities watch the telecast. A lot of them write me. Some of them see me in the airports. They say, well, Pastor Jennings, I enjoy your program too. We take a picture to blah, 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 blah. And I remember a celebrity came and talked to me. And he said, you know one thing I noticed about you? You, you really don't care how rich a person is, do you? I said, no. He said, you're the first preacher I met like this. I said, what made you realize that? He said, because I visited your church. He said, you know, I go visit the other churches. You know, they ask me to stand and ask me to have a few words to, few words to say, you know. You know, and then I give him a big offering. He said, but you, you shook my hand and you, you kept going. <laughs> I got sense enough to know you ain't Jesus. <laughs> See, I don't believe in treating a rich person better than someone who ain't rich. Because I know you born of a woman like anybody else. If you don't wash your stinking body, your body gonna start stinking, your money gonna make you feel better. You gotta eat, you got to sleep, you get sick. Do you understand I'm telling you? Amen. You may have a house bigger than other folks, but still, you pay taxes. Yeah. Right. You got to pay a mortgage if you got one. Right. And eventually, you're going to die. Yeah. See, as long as I look at you from the way the Bible made you, I don't think you're better than nobody else. That's right. 
In other words, everybody, know your place. What is our place? We are creature. What is God's place? He is creator. As soon as we get out of that line, we get on bad terms with God. That's right. All right. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And when you fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish. Wait a minute. Into how much? Many foolish. And and hurtful lust. You get into things you desire, but how does it affect you? And hurtful. Hurtful. Hurtful lust. Hurtful, lust. Hurtful, hurtful lust. You become and you get so rich, you make stupid decisions, and then you embarrass. That's right. That's right. That's right. I think of Barack. First African American president, so they say. <laughs> no one said, why you say it like that, Pastor Jennings? Because every human with white skin comes from Africa. What do you mean? Adam was the first man. Eve was the mother of all living. And that's where everybody comes from. You wasn't made in the laboratory. I know what the nation is telling you here in Chicago, but the white brothers didn't come out of a laboratory. And there is no big head scientist whose head like the golden arches of McDonald's called Yakub that made them. No, no, not at all. There's one creator and there's not a man on the planet that can create man. That's right. God is man's maker. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? And God in his eternal, excellent wisdom, look how good he is. He made creation like this beautiful flower garden. Amen. 